Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Greg Furman and I will be presenting research conducted by myself and my co-author, Dr. Jeff Nitschke. Uh, we are from the University of Cape Town's Evolutionary Machine Learning Group. And currently we have been investigating the impact of social, cultural and environmental factors on synthetic language evolution. So, the study of the social, cultural and biological origins of human language is said to be notoriously difficult to conduct. This difficulty can largely be attributed to historical records and biological data, not painting a clear enough picture of exactly how natural language emerged and evolved. To this end, computer simulation has been able to address the constraints of current methods. Many research Many researchers have hypothesized that language adap adaption, uh, as with other evolutionary processes, entails what is said to be both directed selection and random drift. However, the specific contributions of these processes uh, to language evolution remains an open question. While there has been significant research done on the origins of human language through computer simulation, previous works have demonstrated selective advantages of various forms of speaker social linguistic prestige including things like competing word variants and borrowed words. We aim to further elucidate such adaptive strategies in language evolution by investigating the impact of speaker prestige on word diversity in language evolution. So extending related work, we uh, plan to use computational agent-based, or we use computational agent-based models to elucidate the impact of individual level bias or speaker prestige on population level dynamics, where word diversity is, me is measured by Levenstein similarity. Agents would interact in iterative language games or naming games to name and thus converse about resource types. Such resource types represent conversational topics where resource value or payout indicates agent bias for conversing about um, particular topics. For a null model comparison, we uh, comparatively evaluated random drift versus directed word evolution on evolving word similarity. We're using direct evolution, agent bias for adopting specific words for resources was seen to increase with perceived social prestige. Methods. <clears throat> Experiments used random distributions of agent resource combinations scattered in a Q by Q grounded uh, bounded grid world. Agents were assigned arbitrary terms for one of two resource types that is type A and B, uh, where a term constituted a string of three to nine random ASCII characters. Agents interacted in iterative naming games to name and thus converse about these resource types and were initialized at iteration zero with a fitness of 10. Um, as you can see, yeah, this, this is just a, a graphic of uh, the abstraction of, of, of the actual agents and uh, terms corresponding to their resources, where resource A corresponds to ABC on the left, and on the right. Uh, okay, so uh, resource types uh, represented conversational topics where resource value indicated agent bias for conversing about some particular topic. As such, resources of type A were given fitness payouts of 10 points and deemed popular topics of conversation, where resources of type B were given a payout of one fitness point and thus represent obscure topics. Agents were seen to move haphazardly or randomly about a grid for 2,000 iterations, during which a variable number of evolutionary or random drift naming games were played. A naming game was, was said to commence when an agent moved to top a resource and at least one other agent was within that agent's neighborhood or adjacent cells. So naming games. An evolutionary naming game sees agents bid a percentage of their current fitness in order to win a naming game and thus consume a resource. The highest bidder consumes the resource and has its bid paid out equally to all other agents in the game. The non-winning agent's terms for that resource type are, are set to that term of the winner. The percentage of an agent's fitness to be bid was determined by an artificial neural network controller evolved by a NEAT. NEAT, or Neuroevolution of Augmented Topologies, is a neuroevolution method for evolving weights and topologies of artificial neural networks. Specifically, an artificial neural network controller 
determine the percentage of fitness an agent would bid using all surrounding agents' terms for a resource in decimal form, the payout of a resource or its prestige, and the fitness of the current agent. Further implementation details can be found in our paper. These evolutionary naming games were in contrast to random drift naming games, which also took place between two or more agents, whereby a random agent was assigned to be the winner with uniform probability. As such, this agent's word for a given resource was assigned to all others in the naming game. By including random drift type naming games, agent interactions can be observed when environmental biases, such as prestige, are eliminated. Our simulation parameters saw agent populations of 100 to 500 in increments of 100, resource amounts of 500, 1000, and 2500, and environment areas of 50 by 50, 75 by 75, and 100 by 100 cells. Two resource types were used, that is A and B, where resource types were equally split, having 50% of all resources present being of type A, with the remaining 50% set to type B. Each of these simulation configurations was assigned five random environments, with each environment randomly reset and rerun 20 times. Levenstein similarity is used to determine how similar two agents are linguistically. This is calculated taking the Levenstein distance for number of insertions, deletions, or substitutions required to transform one string into another. For example, to transform hello with an A into hello with an E, requires a single substitution, at least, of A with E. This distance can be normalized to give a value indicating how similar two strings are using the, equa the equation at the bottom of the screen. So, given that agents in this context had two terms for each, for each resource type in the environment, to gauge similarity between, these two, between two agents, the Levenstein similarity score was calculated between some concatenation of each agent's terms for resources. The example below shows two agents, each with a term for resources A and B. We can therefore see that using the Levenstein similarity calculation alongside a concatenated string of all terms, a value indicating overall linguistic similarity between agent one and two can be computed. In this case, uh, uh, agents one and two are deemed to be 66.7% similar uh, due to only two insertions being required uh, in, in order to change one string into another, one concatenated string into another. Okay, so onto experiments. Experiments serve to test the impact of agent bias or speaker prestige on evolving language diversity for varying resource types. As was previously mentioned, agent bias is represented by the payout of a resource where a larger reward indicates, in, indicates greater prestige. Thus, we tested four experiment sets in order to elucidate the role of speaker prestige on the evolutionary language process. Note that in all experiment sets, agent resource combinations are randomly dispersed throughout the environment. Set one to three used evolutionary naming games, where set one had both resource types A and B having equal payout, uh, and thus no bias. Set two, uh, set two saw uh, resources, resources of type A having a greater payout or prestige than that of type B, indicating A was popular and B was obscure. Set three, uh, saw the first half of the simulation or 1000 iterations having type A resource, resources be popular and type B being obscure after, um, after which, well, after half of the simulation had concluded, um, A type resources went switched to one uh, resource point payout and B to 10. So the, the, the roles, the, the prestige there was, was switched between type A and B resources. And then lastly, uh, set four, or the, the random drift set, uh, did not use evolutionary naming games um, and was used as a, con as a control group in order to see the effect of uh, the evolutionary uh, naming games or the evolutionary process on um, how language would eventually evolve, particularly when no prestige or bias was attached to any of the resources being conversed about. Okay, so onto results. 
Results use Levenstein similarity to measure linguistic differences between agents, where zero indicates no similarity between words for resource types, and one indicates two agents share the exact same words for all resource types. Regression analysis was used to investigate the relationship between Levenstein similarity and environmental fa factors, such as grid area, population size, and number of resources present in the environment. This analysis showed a positive relationship between resources and average Levenstein similarity. It also showed a negative relationship between, between negative Levenstein similarity and population size and environment area, respectively. Using two-way ANOVA, linguistic similarity was observed to differ significantly between experiment sets. Post hoc analysis using Taki's test showed experiment sets one to three, or those that use evolutionary naming games, to not differ significantly from one another with respect to linguistic similarity post completion of the simulation. It was ever found that experiment set four, the random drift experiment set, differed significantly with respect to Levenstein similarity from sets one to three. In order to assess iteration level differences in linguistic similarity between, between experiment groups at the iteration level, a two sample Common Grove Smirnov test was used to compare the distribution of mean similarity per iteration of each experiment set. These tests found there to be significant differences between all experiment sets, indicating that the distributions of mean Levenstein similarity per iteration differ significantly at the uh, iteration level and experiment level. Using Welsh's t-test, we also found there to be significant differences between average Levenstein similarity between agents at iteration zero or pre-communication and at iteration 2000 or post. One can see distinct clusters of agents can be formed by Levenstein dissimilarity when communication has ceased in the figure on the right. Before communicating, however, differences in agent similarity fail to form any clusters as is seen on the left. Thus, such figures show in greater detail the manner in which linguistic similarity changes following agent interactions. Results indicated there was no significant difference in the average similarity of words propagated in the population via evolutionary naming games or experiment sets one to three. As in related work, individual level bias or bidding in this study resulted in increased word similarity at the population level. This indicates the critical role of directed or evolutionary word selection on population dynamics. Our findings support this notion whereby statistically significant linguistic similarity differences between evolutionary and random drift experiments was observed. However, however, for all experiments, results indicated varying environments, parameters, sorry. Uh, however, for all experiments, results indicated varying environment parameters significantly impacted average linguistic similarity of words in the population. Average word similarity decreased with population and environment size, but increased with resource amounts. Such an increase is likely the result of greater resources, allowing for more possible conversations to take place, thus increasing language sharing and therefore average linguistic similarity amongst the population. To further ascertain environmental impact on language evolution, ongoing research is investigating how individual level, cultural and social bias changes topic popularity, as well as how factors uh, as well as how, how such factors influence population level dynamics, such as corpus diversity. Thank you so much, Shivan, for listening. Um, if you uh, want to look at our implementation, uh, you can check it out on GitHub. Um, I've linked it below um, with the QR code. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks so much, Greg, for the talk. Uh, I've Okay, there's no question yet. So I guess we can ask. Maybe I can start. Can you, because it's been a long time I haven't done this kind of evolutionary dynamics. Um, so can you remind me how basically the winner, because it seems to be like the, the winner, the winner absorbs the term from the other, but how do you decide the winner exactly between the two? Because it seems the neural network outputs basically the, the bid, but- uh, yeah. Can you go a bit more into detail for me on, on this? Sure. Um, so I, I just I just put up the slide here. So what would what would happen is um, actually 
this this would probably work as well. So, um, but what happened is an agent would take in from its from its surrounding. So often, after some sort of um, language interaction or naming game commences, an agent would take in all surrounding agents' terms for that resource. So in, in this case, if it's, if there were two agents here, um, the the blue agent would would take in the the white agent's term for that resource of type A. It would also take in the payout of that particular resource uh, that that, they, that they've encountered. So in this case. Type A would uh, have a payout of 10, and would also take in its own fitness. And the artificial neural network would serve to output some sort of percentage of the agent's current fitness that it would want to bid in order to consume the resource, thus taking in its fitness, uh, as well as having that bid paid out to the other agents. So um, pretty much in, in, this, in this particular instance, the agent with the highest bid would be the one to consume the resource and thus have its term set to um, the, all, all other agents in the, in, in the interaction or, or the losing agents would then have their term in this particular case for resource of type A, um, they would have their term set to that of the winning agent. And thus that winning agent is able to propagate its language uh, amongst the population. Okay. That's Okay. So I have one for Greg too. Um, could I ask you to go back to the slide where you had all of the parameters or the simulations you've been running? Um, sure. So I was very interested like in this idea of, you know, um, and the naming as well, like of, of prestige. So I was wondering mm -hmm. like if you played around with, with um, you know, different implementations of prestige or say making more or less agents, uh, say having this feature or not, um, like how, how much did you explore that? So um, we, we explored um, increasing amount of resource types in, in, in the environment. So we, uh, I, I believe we went up to about five, but there was there was not seem to there was not seem to be any significant difference in um, at, at the population level when we increase the amount of resource types. So if we had four obscure resources and one prestigious resource, there wasn't seem to be that big a uh, a quantitative difference between uh, at, at the population level between um, how it interacted. Um, we we didn't. Um, I mean, now, now that you mentioned it, it, perhaps it would have been an interesting to see what would happen if we were to have taken different agents and made them play different naming games. So one agent, so we can make half the population play evolutionary and half the population play random drift. We didn't, we didn't um, mix around too much, too much with that because our, our main goal with, with this particular research was just attempting to see how um, in, in somewhat of a, of, a, of a vanilla way, how speaker prestige would would just uh, would affect population level dynamics. Um, but yeah, um, if, if when it comes to environmental parameters, though, um, we we experimented quite a bit with those. I can just go back to those graphs um, over here. So um, when we obviously we increased resources um the actual grid area in which the in which the agents were were interacting in as well as well as the the population size of agents and um we found that by adding in more resources it was able to increase linguistic similarity amongst the, the population what the population level um whereas larger environment sizes and uh, population sizes were actually seen to decrease similarity um, and uh, the, the the exact reasons for this are um, are still being investigated with, with, with further research. But um, yeah, I, I don't know if that answers the question. <laughs> no, no, that, that, that was great. Like you know, I was just interested saying the in in the in the things you couldn't say like during the presentation, like how you oh, like oh, yeah, sure. the different things you tried and. I mean, um, in in in, the, in this particular in this particular research, what we did, uh, it, it it differed from from um, research published just prior, in which 
um, agents agents in this case were able to move over one another, whereas in, in previous works we had some we had a lot more blocking. So if there was an agent and a resource situated at a particular grid cell, um, no agent could pass through that, and that that yielded its own um, particular population level dynamics, in which we saw a lot more a lot less uh, linguistic similarity emerging because we, we found by uh, when there was that, that, that blocking factor involved, almost ge like geographically bounded um, regions would form where resources and agents would literally isolate, isolate agents to some particular area. And that's, we found a lot less similarity in those instances because agents weren't able to just move freely around. Um, whereas in this, in this over here, we, 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 we instead decided to mitigate that because, as I said, we were just uh, trying to assess the effect of prestige. So yeah. we, 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 weren't, we, weren't, we weren't trying to throw too many environmental, environmental factors that would uh, have muddied the waters. <laughs> right, 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 right. Thank you. That was very, yeah, sure. Thank you. very insightful. Yeah, thanks well, thank you so much. I think we're good. Uh...